Welcome back to the Duck Call Room, folks. It is a lovely Thursday. And uh, look, if you're new joining us, you check us out here on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash duck call room, all one word. Be sure when you're here, hit the subscribe button and go ahead and hit that little bell. That way you'll get notifications to know when we're here. If you're listening to us on your podcast app, go ahead and jump on over to YouTube. Watch all the annex as they happen in real time. And uh, I think that's about all I've got for the intro. Sigh, what did... How was your weekend? Did you watch the Masters? No. You what? Nope. I flew to Mississippi. And I'm involved with the children, the homes of hope over there, the kids. And the reason I'm involved with them, I ain't but a big kid myself. Okay. So we was uh, over there for my annual Cy Robertson skeet shoot. We had, uh, what, about 400 people? <clears throat> Four to a team, so that's 100 teams. Okay. Had a real good event. They uh, enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it. It was a real pretty place. The Running Creek Ranch was where we was at. So it was a real pretty place. And they had a bunch of ponds that probably had big fish in it, which we'll say something about later. Mm-hmm. But uh, but the, we had a good time. <laughs> the Homes of Hope uh, is in South Mississippi, south of Hattiesburg down there. And uh, I think they have four or five houses now. And uh, I know a couple of those houses were – were made possible due to Uncle Si, <laughs> you know, spending his time and, and, and efforts with that. It is, and they do a great job. I, and we, how long have we been doing this, Si? About seven years? Seven or eight. Seven or eight yeah, years. And positive. I remember seeing some of these kids when they were this tall, and now they're – Now they're grown people. They're grown. 20 years old, you know, 25. Now they work in the event. Because one come up the other That's day. Right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. They come up and said, do you remember me? And I said, no. <laughs> he is hey he's, he's 25 years old covid brain boys COVID you know, and then brain. like he was you know no it wasn't covid brain. <laughs> it was just hey he was a kid when i met him you so know? instead of these kids going through the foster system they they get no. these kids and they actually go to court for them and uh no. and fight for them in court and and they raise them in a godly atmosphere yep. uh with a with a House good, mom and dad. A house mom and dad. Yep. A good, yep. solid, established yep. family. Christian and, uh, family. It's it's an awesome thing. That's, it really is. So yeah. So. I, well, I remember when you were first starting doing those. I did a couple of them with you, and and it was it was fun. I always enjoyed it. There. No, no. I think it, when I did it to to put it into perspective, there were only they were building their second home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whenever I went over. Yeah. So they got four now, and they actually are fixing to build a fifth one because. <clears throat> As long as you, when they graduate high school, as long as they're working toward a degree, they can stay on campus, okay? That's what he called it, okay? Yeah. To, uh, as long as you're actually, you know, keeping your grades up and working toward a degree. Oh, that's, so, that's awesome. <clears throat> it's an, you know, Michael Garrett is, is the one in charge of it. He's a doctor, he's got a PhD, I think. Okay, he grew up in one here in Monroe. Yeah, he grew up at the yeah. one here in town. <laughs> yeah. so. so he knows the ins and outs, the bad and the good stuff of it, okay? Yeah. And he made sure that all of his ministry over there and his campus, okay, has got all the good stuff. Yeah, He does a good job. Oh, he when I heard job. that he was actually going to court, paying money to make sure that these kids don't go back to, you know, like a, a drug mom and dad addicts okay he wouldn't let them go back in there you know because philip had told me that's a he's in a children's home here in monroe in Ruston. yeah and he said that was the bad thing bad part of, of what he was involved in is that they'd keep them three months and you know then have to turn them back over yeah, yeah. Right. So, so bad deal when i when i heard that he actually took them to court and actually won the case and kept the kids especially when it's like uh, you know, brothers and sisters, they wanted to separate them. You know, somebody wanted to adopt a boy or girl, and wouldn't, but wouldn't take both. You know, they found it for Christ. That's right. That. And I had one one of the big donors for that thing came up to me uh, a couple of years ago and said, "Why, why this?" He said, "Why does Uncle Si choose this over, say, some other charity?" What did you? Hey, I'm curious to what you answered that. And I I looked him straight in the eye. I said, "Cause Uncle Si loves." kids oh. especially kids that are disadvantaged now i didn't i didn't go into anything <laughs> that's yeah. why he hangs out he, with us hey he yeah. didn't go into detail points <laughs> yeah there's kids that that you would think 
would struggle in life due to their circumstances, uh, Uncle Si is a really soft, soft uh, spot in his heart for those kids. Well, I, I just look, and, and I was very lucky. You know, I grew up with a mom and dad and siblings, okay? And we was dirt poor, okay? But, I mean, we had what we needed, yeah. We had, first, we God loved us, and then we loved each other, the family. So I'd always say, that, hey, if the war was coming in, I got a time machine, guess where it's set, what year I'm going to set? Right back to your childhood. Back back to the, when I was a kid. He going to get back on that path. Hey, I used to love it when Mom would get sick of us, load us up in the Falcon, drive us 15 <laughs> miles up, <laughs> drop us off at the levee and say, I'll see you at supper time. <laughs> and I, well, I, can still, I can still do that for you. Oh, no, no. I you want me to go drop you no, off no, down hey, the levee? I wouldn't mind doing it. Oh. To have somebody with Stone, Stone has to go with me, though. <laughs> hey. Yeah, but hey, I would look. I wouldn't mind doing it at all because we'd push us a log out, and ride down. Yeah, wait a minute, hold it. There's a dead gum sandbar. We got willows on it. Let's see what's going on there. <laughs> I had to look up what a falcon was because so. I've heard that story a okay. hundred times. What's oh, a falcon? Yeah. It's a it's a the coolest car I've ever. Oh, seen. Oh no, it was. Yeah. Hey. Things look that's a lot I, different that's now. That's what though. I drove. <laughs> a falcon. What color was it? White. Man. Which I don't know why people want a white car. Have you lost your mind? That's the only color to have. Oh, no, it ain't. Yes, it is. It, it, you can tell when it's filthy, okay? And you can't tell when a black one's filthy uh, like uh, yours? Well, hey. This of course, yours has been dirty camouflage. so long it looks uh, like it's two-tone, so it don't uh, matter. Well, hey, there you go. <laughs> That's been a good truck, though. I guarantee you, mine, too. That sucker's paid for, which is the... The that's most the beautiful part about <laughs> that's it. Right. That's the best part about it. Yeah. When you get rid of your car notes, son, that's like getting a raise. Good night of living. That's I guarantee you. Well, that's good. I'm glad y'all raised a bunch of money. Y'all did good. Well, hey, I don't know how much money they raised. Oh, yeah. Trust, they, they, trust they, me, raised they did. a good bit of money. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. not only that, it's a, it's a good cause. It's a great cause. Um, but they always give Uncle Si a little prize every time we go down there. And uh, this time it was some bass fishing in a privately stocked. In one of Bill Dance deals. I'm talking about. You know? <laughs> hey, well, I like them kind hey, of. Hey, yeah, it's easy to be a pro bass fisherman when you go into uh -huh. just you know a private pond that just loaded. Hey, that now you, ones. you speaking my language yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, do you got a pen to it? Huh? You got the address? Hey, hey. Oh, I know where it's at. Yeah, okay. we'll go back to but that. But this is one of them things. Hey, this is invitation only. And, oh, yeah. And you ain't getting an invitation. <laughs> got to have an invitation. <laughs> right, man. So, right. so Uncle Si has to do the skeet shoot. That's that's where all the people come and scoot sheet. Uh, uh, scoot what did I say? Oh, scoot sheet. Oh, oh, scoot the scoot cheater. boogie. <laughs> they, they were shoot skeet, and, and, that's, and that's how they raise their money. Scoot boogie. <laughs> well, hey, hey, he got me started because then I went to Brooks and Dunn, boys. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he loves the Brooks and Dunn. But anyways, uh, that, that's that skeet shoot has become a their biggest fundraiser by far. And and by the way, that's the man that come up with that. Okay. Well, all I said was he needs rednecks with guns. Yeah, and food. And yeah, and that's what they come up. <laughs> Feed with. them and let them shoot something. So anyways, uh, Cy si drives around in a golf cart taking pictures of everybody while they're shooting skeet, and how, raising and, money and, hey. and harassing them. You did so, you shoot? No. Hey, no. I'm just going to harass them clowns no. in our shooting. I thought you'd it. be the best shooter out there. No. Oh, I am. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Why didn't you didn't, shoot? Oh, I did shoot this time because uh, Michael Dean said, hey. They said, hey, I want the, the photographer to take a picture of you shooting. I said, okay. He said, oh, you don't have to shoot. I said, oh, if I go up, I'll shoot. So I said, hey, hand me that over and under. Give me some sales. So I missed one, and I knew he couldn't stand it. And he said, hey. I'll give you a hundo to hit, too. I said, pull, boom, boom. Give him a dollar, hundred dollars. <laughs> you hustled him? Oh, did I hustle him? <laughs> and he still owes me that hundo, Michael Garrett. Oh, tell him make it in a donation right. to Homes of Hope for Children. But, hey, I'll give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're if you're needing to, to get rid of some, some money for tax purposes, that is a, <laughs> that is a good that, one. That's a good okay. one to give to. Now, anyways, while Uncle Si was shooting skeet, <laughs> 
<laughs> You're slowing down on that yeah. one. <laughs> me, me and old Bullfrog, we slipped down there to that private pond <laughs> with, with, some, with some wacky rigs and put a whooping on them five, six, seven pound bass. I mean. So you caught about 40 the first day. Bass? Okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay. But five of them would have weighed 25 pounds, five pound average. Yeah, she had a 25 pound yeah, bag. Yeah. Yeah. That's I told good. Stone, I said, hey, you ought to put her on the B. B A S S circuit, cause she could she could she could fish with them boys, okay, and put them in the boat. Cause I got to take one. What day I went with? We caught both folks caught about five that weighed five pounds a piece. Yeah, but look, let's take our first break, and then we'll we'll get back into more side tall tales right after this. Whether it's back, knees, neck, or shoulder pain, the underlying cause is likely inflammation. You have to defeat inflammation or it can cause permanent damage. Cy, si, how do you defeat inflammation? Hey, you got to take Omega XL, boys. And why would we take it? Look, it's 35 years of research and development, and look, it's like you own it because they're working for you. Guaranteed they're working for you. It comes from the pristine waters of New Zealand. New Zealand! (laughs) Yes! I'm getting excited, boys. It's the oil from the green muscle, and it is backed by 35 years of clinical research. Omega XL attacks the inflammation that's causing my pain. It's brilliant. Pain relievers and topical rubs just mask the problem, but not Omega XL. It neutralizes the inflammation that causes painful stiff joints and muscles that was good enough for us to try it look if you want to try it let's get you started order omega xl now and get a second bottle for free visit omega xl.com slash duck that's omega xl.com slash duck or call 1-800-844-4888 that's 800-844-4888 I found the scoreboard. You are not the best shooter there. No chance. Oh, you, the, you got the scoreboard. The results? Uh-huh. Yeah. Some dude named Clint would whoop you in a skeet shooting competition. What'd he shoot? Hey. 98. Out of 100. Hey. Mm, yeah. You know why? It's out of 100. <laughs> if it was out of 100, one man hit a 98. Whoa. That's pretty good. Best I've ever done is a 92. There was about 10 people that beat a 92. Yeah. Oh, that's some people do it all the time. Mm-hmm. They're professional. Uh, so they got the scores posted. But they're the oh, yeah. ones. You're not listening. on there. I uh, know it. I didn't shoot. My favorite is some. Hey, guy I na- shoot. With, I shoot at live stuff, son. Some guy named Chad <laughs> hit seven of them. Seven. Chad, time out to find of a hundred. <laughs> time to find a new hobby. <laughs> mm. <laughs> if you're listening, Chad, go fishing. <laughs> so you found the results from the skeet shoot. Where yeah. did Where did Cy rank? Cy didn't shoot. I'm not in. Didn't I didn't shoot. shoot. I only shoot live stuff, boys. Some guy named Squints. And he squints. Does, squints doesn't even have a last name. Hey. Shot eighty six, and I, I like eight. that guy. Well, he's squinting. That's why I can't hit nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't <laughs> hit eighty six of them. Uh, Son, if I have, if I do shoot it, I'm gonna hit a hundred percent. Okay, it would be one hundo. I'll put one hundo on that. I, being I, I'll incorrect. take your money. I'll take your money. <laughs> Guaranteed. I'll, I'll hustle you. <laughs> yeah, y- y'all weren't joking, man. There's a they, y'all had a ton of people out there shooting. Oh, oh it was a lot of hey, yeah. this scoreboard goes on for and days. Look, what got me is they're from everywhere. Mm-hmm. All yeah. over. Uh, oh yeah, Texas always sends quite a few people. What do they win? Huh? If they win the skeet Oh no, shoot. no, they then that's the thing. They've got some good prizes. Over and under shotguns, uh the uh, six point five Creedmoor rifles. Yeah. You know, Do you put on a concert for them? Huh? No. Oh, I was just no, kidding. No, I'm out of that. He's out of the concert. Yeah, I'm out of that. He's out of the singing, singing hey, business. The band has been disbanded. So you didn't watch any of the masters? No. So you don't know what happened? No. Dang, that's I don't know about a couple of people on it. Or maybe <laughs> just I better right, make that one. Oh, that's unfortunate. But watch it. Okay. He didn't yeah. win. But well, they hey, well, pick the uh, first Japanese golfer won the Masters, which is pretty cool. That's a that's well, a hey, cool thing. Yeah. <clears throat> that that boy Hideki is that gonna have him a, some statues. It's a, yeah, it's a worldwide event. I mean, yo, golf yep. is worldwide. Yep, and he went out there and strapped a whole bunch. He tried to make it interesting there at the end by screwing up, but he made the best bogey I've ever seen in golf. So that was 
That's pretty incredible that he made a six from there. I so, was rooting for that kid that looked like Happy Gilmore's caddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Zalatoris? Look, he looked like he hung his head out the window the whole way to the golf course mm-hmm. and then got there and started playing. Yeah, I, I struggled watching it because for some reason I couldn't ever call him Will. His name is Will Zalatoris, but he, he looks like a Richie to me. Like, <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know, but if your last name's going to be Zalatoris, you need a first name to match it. And Will ain't it. Will is not the deal. Yeah, if his name is Zalatoris, you need something like Zorro Zalatoris. Oh, a double Z. <laughs> no, no, okay. hey. All yeah, right. If you're going to have one, let's have one, boy. So maybe yeah. if he's, when Zorro. he makes a big putt, he ought to just start doing the yeah. Z. Oh, yeah. Was that Chi-Chi? Is, is that what we discussed? But that was, that was the sword was? fighting. But this is well, just hey, a no, Z. no. If, if he wanted, he should just have a real sword on it and hey, just, just take the top of the flag off. Don't even bother <laughs> pulling it out the hole. Speaking of real <laughs> swords. <laughs> Uh, what uh, about that sword right. you got sitting there uh, in front of? Tell them about your knife, sir. Hey, that was a gift I, I got over there, and uh, there's only been three of them given out: Waylon, Willie, and me. Hmm. Okay, that could be a country that, song. Hey, that's Waylie Jennings. Okay, it ain't Willie Robertson. It's <laughs> Willie <laughs> Willie Nelson. Okay, and then me, Uncle Fire. They even got my name on it. I'm gonna cut you with that later too. Well, <laughs> well tell him what's so special about it. Hey. If you're Look, Watch that, it. I'm trying to make it where they can see it. That's a Jim Bowie knife, okay? The real deal? The real deal. Oh, Jim. And the wood on this and the handle, okay, came from Jim Bowie's house in Lafouche, Louisiana, in the 1827 to 1831. Wow. So I did a book report on Jim Bowie one time. He from Louisiana? Right. He died in Louisiana. Oh. Hey, he's got a home go. in Louisiana. Used to. I don't think he's uh, he there might no have more. Died in he, ain't, he ain't here no more. But he did have a home, and that's a picture of him. Okay, and it tells you about it. Okay, all about it. He owned a home in uh, a plantation place in Lafouche, Louisiana. Oh no, he so, died at the Alamo. So hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but hey, like we had the little deal before. Now that is a knife, boys. No, that's a real one there. Yeah, that's a real one there. Yeah. Hey. Please Just run your cut. finger. No, run your finger. No, no thank yeah. you. I trust yeah. you. Hey, trust me when I tell you that thing is sharper than a razor. Hey, got right. it, boy. So Jim right. Bowie spent most of his life in Louisiana, but he was born in Kentucky and he died in the Alamo. Right. There it is. Hey. Remember the Alamo. Uh, that's, that's quite it. a that's quite a story there. Hey, and that knife he had has killed a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Trust me, boys. Hey, At your hands? Was, hey, Jim Bowie was a hey, knife man. Okay. Imagine how fast he skinned a deer. Oh, what are you talking about? Hey. What's up? Oh, like you that? could actually kill him if you learn to throw it. What? Uh, you probably don't have to throw it to kill somebody. Well, no, I, no I'm talking about deer. Oh. Well, you could probably just, have to throw it at a deer. Well, okay. you could probably just drop it on top of him. You got up in a tree. Well, hey, now if you're slick enough to do that, yeah. so that, mm-hmm. that won't work because it's got enough weight. It, you know. I know how one you, thing, uh, Martin. I figured out real fast uh, if you ever want to be a fishing guide, uh, you need to rethink that. I never wanted to be this. I'm sitting in the middle. Of, imagine this. They got <laughs> they got ra- wacky rigs. Him and Bullfrog. Bullfrog's 13. She's on the front of the boat. Size so in the back of the boat, sitting in the chair. I'm in the middle. Yeah. So and there's moss in this pond. Okay. And, Especially and if you throw it in shallow, real shallow water. Yeah. So I told him. I said, Look, y'all try to land it just on the edge of that moss because some fish are up on the beds. And uh, if you can imagine. Sitting in between them two, uh, you saying they weren't pinpoint accurate? They were not pinpoint. Oh, no. They got better towards the end, but uh, I spent all evening picking moss off of hooks, retying <laughs> hooks, putting them little rings around them. Uh, oh, oh, ring. oh, oh no, no, no. Hey, them he's really worms. good. He is really good. Okay, with young children and old men. That's it. He's a good deckhand. <laughs> Which oh, one are you? you? <laughs> hey. Hey, both. <laughs> yeah. So I, I told, I told myself, right? I, I told myself, right? He just right struggles there. with his peers, huh? Yeah. 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 Oh, I have trouble with my peers. Now. If you want to be a, a, a fishing guy, to rethink that real quick. Uh, oh, I couldn't do it. But uh, I will say I this. I had I had a blast watching them oh, catch them oh, fish right. in between picking moss off a of hook <laughs> and taking fish right. off of hooks. It was. Like that. Hey, that's why I'm, you know, you know for me, can't be able to catch if. Stone will see the lion jumping. Yeah. 
I, I laugh. Well, big bucket mouths come out of yeah, water like yeah. this. Tail walking on the you know. And Stone would say, yeah, hey, play him, play him. You know, there you go, there you go. Pop. You know. That picture. Oh, no, 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 no. How no. many did you break off? Uh, no, I didn't break off none. I, I, none. Missed, I missed about five. Oh, I got you. On the first few, uh, he, he was reeling down yeah. like a. Like a Texas slack line. Oh, oh no no! I was you know what? No 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 no! I told him. I, I was just gonna say BK <laughs> definitely got the bigger fish. Oh yeah. Golly. No no! I told him that's gonna be the best one. Okay, when he took it. Side, yeah. did you no. catch that, or is that what you're no. using for bait? No no! Yeah. I'm serious. That was one I threw that's out there. That's a little fella. Yeah, I threw out there and it was pumped and it got tight and I I just raised up on it and started reeling. Well, he's coming to the water and reeling me. BK was the same way. She done like that and told me done that. And then it was when he's <laughs> and I went, uh -huh. I got the bad end of this stick, boy. So you caught the male and she caught the female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, caught, what... yeah she caught the big, big mama. Yeah, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, what a good picture that turned right. out to be. But hey, don't you know? You don't want to bet her no money. You know, Why she, not? She'll take your money. Take your okay? money. Oh yeah. yeah. What'd you lose yeah. to her? Uh, hey, Hondo. Well, good thing you're owed a Honda. Well, do, you, hey. do you play for less than a Hondo these days? Uh, no. Nah. Nah. Life's too short, that's, ain't it? Yeah, life's too short. Get it up. That is a mark. good picture. Look at her. That's the only time you're gonna see her smile. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. She ain't not a big smile. Yeah, she ain't a big smile. No. Uh, I wonder I, where she gets. I that deer from. hunt with her, and it's it's <laughs> and then just click, puts it back on site, sets it down, and then goes one of these deals here. You know, tell me, you gonna shoot that one? <laughs> <laughs> Stone cold. I, I said, just stone cold. I told, I told Stone, I said, you ain't have to worry about her. Yeah. I said, if they ever get out of line, she'll pop a cap on them boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Lord, fantastic. have mercy. Well, let's take another break. We'll be right back after this. So this is one that I'm excited about. Uh oh, he's excited about this one. I'm excited. That's not a shh, be quiet. That was supposed to be like my my take on getting a steak or bacon to sizzle we need godwin here for that yeah god because something tells effects. me he's very familiar with the sound of bacon mm. sizzling <laughs> i just have a feeling i just have a feeling look for the first time we're going to tell you guys about moink moink is a uh, is a meat delivery business where you go on there and they deliver meat straight to your home they source it from family farms from family businesses and it's just good stuff. It is all grass-fed, grass-finished, beef, lamb, pastured pork, pastured chicken, or wild-caught Alaskan salmon. You choose, but you help family farms become financially independent outside of the big agriculture. Their animals are raised outdoors. Their fish swim wild in the ocean, and the moink meat is free of antibiotics, hormones, sugar, and all the other junk you find in prepackaged meat. So sign up at moinkbox.com slash duck to get a year of ground beef for free and then pick what meats you want delivered with your first box. Change what you get each month and cancel any time. They were founded by a uh, eighth generation farmer who was on Shark Tank. So look, you know it's legit. If the Shark Tank people invested in them, you know they did their homework in it. Join the Moink movement today. Go to moinkbox.com slash duck right now. And the listeners of this show will get free ground beef for a year. That's one year of the best ground beef you'll ever taste, but for a limited time. Spelled moink, M-O-I-N-K, box.com slash duck. That's moinkbox.com slash duck. Moink, moink, good eating. That is a good that's picture. That's a good picture. That's a good I'm picture. Gonna that. that, I'm going to get that one blown yeah, up. Put on yeah, the that's, a, that's a good one. You're right, though. She only smiles when she's uh, got a – Oh, she, you know what she told me the other day? When she's winning. And uh, her mama wanted to take a picture with her on Easter Sunday, and she said, I don't take pictures. Oh. <laughs> she, no, she said, I don't take pictures unless they're with animals. That's right. With fish or animals. That's, that's it. That's it. That's fish it. or now, deer. Yeah, I remember when something Nan said something about you got to uh, – uh, I want you to put on that pretty dress where I can take a picture or something. BK said, no. Ain't happening. No, it ain't nah. gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Well, they had that daddy daughter dance, and she, oh, that's she, what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> it was the the daughter daddy dancing. Yeah, you know, I'm talking about uh, Nan said, "Hey, you got to you got to wear a uh, dress." She's no, nah, ain't happening. Uh, she said, "I won't go to that." <laughs> and her, and her mama said, "Oh, are you going?" <laughs> 
And she said, I don't think so. <laughs> she, oh, I don't believe that course, to be correct. Of course, I had to chastise her for oh, being yeah. disrespectful to yeah. her mother, yeah. of course. And then but, we took her shopping at Academy or something yeah. Yeah. instead and, of going to I the had, dance. And then I had to explain to her mother, this is not her cup of tea. So if she don't want to do it, you know, don't make her. I mean, don't make her all right. the all Mama wanted was the picture. Yeah. So I I talked her into putting the dress on to take the picture. <laughs> Please tell me y'all went fishing afterwards. And, no, well she oh, no. might have, but I took. <laughs> she might have. Yeah, I she took the other did. two. I took the other two to the daddy daughter dance. And oh, she, so she, she stayed home. I like the kids at yeah. Stone made. So, That's a pretty right. oh, well, <laughs> hey, they're 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 a bone to be chewed. <laughs> I like the fact that, I like the fact that your middle one just said no. No daddy daughter. Them middle ones is always different though. Every oh, every middle child I've ever run across. Look at Willie. <laughs> Look at Jace. Both of them stuck right there in the middle. Yeah. The, all them middle uh, ones is, is. He's a middle child. Eh, I don't think of. so. No, he's younger. I don't. No, think he's so. a baby. I'm the he's baby. the baby boy. That's right, the baby That's boy. True. I'm yeah. the baby boy. But of course you. Are. Well, of course, <laughs> of course I am course too. You are. <laughs> where are we all? Stone, on? where are you at? I, I was the firstborn. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> responsible. <laughs> it all makes sense. The responsible yeah, like I, one. I was, yep. um, well, I wasn't too responsible, but I, I was. <laughs> I definitely got the got the <laughs> wrong end of the stick, as they say, on multiple occasions. I, I, I was the guinea pig, I guess. And that's what I told my oldest daughter. I said, look, I'm sorry, but you're the guinea pig. You're the first one I had. So, 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 right. you're, the, <laughs> you're the test. You're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the starter child. I said, yeah. and I'm going to screw up. We all screw up, but hey, <laughs> you know, I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember that when you go to raise one. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's why I always said there's two things everybody sucks at. I mean, a, marriage. <laughs> B, a parent. Yep. Because you've never been either. That's it. There's, there's, there's no... No case where you've been either the first time. And in both really? cases, you will learn the hard way. Oh, buddy. Guaranteed. Yep. Even if it involves going to sit with somebody that knows a whole lot about it. That's it. <laughs> Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Counselors, everything else. Hey, you know, I, you know, don't be prideful and think that you don't need to talk to somebody. Oh, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. You all, and That's especially it. in marriage, there's a lot of times you need a third party. Mm-hmm. You need somebody that's unbiased to tell which a one referee. of them is wrong. That or you know? either just learn to say the magic words. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm ma'am. sorry. It yes, won't ma'am. happen again. Yes, ma'am. I won't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so I heard a story the other day. <laughs> Talk, you know how compassionate these Robertsons are. Oh, ain't they? And uh, of course, I'm married to one, and, and it's it's com- compassionate is I would say the no they they do have compassionate tendencies <laughs> for those people who are not in the family. <laughs> now, if you're in a friend or family, I'd put you in the same category. Uh, the term compassionate need not apply. Nope. To siblings, cousins, friends. So, in other words, now, if I was got sick and and I got sick, really bad sick, the last time I got sick, I thought I was gonna die. Um, my wife looked at me. She said, "You gonna get out of that bed, or you just gonna lay there all day?" <laughs> How long are you gonna milk this thing? <laughs> and I said, "I said, well, I don't feel good." She said, "Well, suck it up. You need to go to work." <laughs> And that's just the Robertson way. That's just how it is. Yeah. See, I'm the oddball in the family on that part. I'm very, I'm very compassionate. Well, yeah, you are, but still, I am. if I Phil, really am. if Phil gets sick, you ain't gonna call him. Uh, uh. Now I would go down to his house and see him. Oh, you would. Okay, yeah, but see, I, I'm telling you, I'm the oddball in the family. And okay. by see him, he means he'd go down to his house and take a nap on his couch. That's right. Instead yeah. of his uh. own. <laughs> it's well, been a while. I, that look, that blue I, couch misses you. Well, no, no luck, hey, you know. That thing had a firm imprint of your body in it. Hey, that was a comfortable couch. <laughs> so, so, hey, that would tickle me when I found out Willie was going to fire me. That mm. part, I just, I never, you know, that was funny to me. Mm. <laughs> that been, it really was, okay, because, hey, Phil just told him, hey, no, son, don't mess with Don't so, mess with Sai. Sai, si, the reason I brought that up was uh, that, that story Al told me the other day when Phil came into the room when all y'all were playing dominoes, your dad, your mom, yeah. your cousins, yeah. Phil came in there with the first duck call he ever built. 
Al said, this is how it went down. He, a young Phil Robertson walks into the room with his daddy playing dominoes. He put that duck call in front of his daddy's face. He said, Dad, I'm going to make a million dollars selling this duck call. And Paul looked at him and said, give me 10. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you come talking about a, a, a father crushing a son, okay? That's why I was. He just, you know, Phil said, "Hey, one day I will sell one million dollars." That Paul said, ten. <laughs> he You're, just kept playing the game. Hey, and the, hey, not that none of them. They all kind of looked up when he walked in and said, "Hey, you know, that's the first one off the assembly line, boys." <clears throat> and he said, "And hey, before it's through." I'm going to sell one million of these. Well, they just went back to playing dominoes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. A little did they know. Uh, yeah. 30 years later, he sold a million. Of them. Right, he sold, <laughs> and 30 year. years later, he sold one million of these bad boys. Yeah. And then in the 40th year, he sold a million in a year. So, Ooh. you know, look at it that way. And here we are. We're, now uh, we get to talk to everybody all because of that. Right there. No, no. That's right. And then that's why I tell them, and then you want to tell me that you can't see that there is a supreme being that runs this world. Because it all started right there. Hey. And I, I was the most important part of this. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why? I'm first. He yeah, was, right. he because was you're trained. a crazy old no, man no, who makes no, great TV. No, yeah. no, because, hey, <laughs> this crazy old man makes the reads, and without reads, this it thing don't make no don't noise. Don't work, boys. Yeah. Right. So, but, hey, intricate part, J.D. Well, you're a pretty good part of the marketing campaign, right. well, too. Well, hey, there it is. And like I told Willie, I said, little did you know, Willie, oh. you was looking at a diamond in the rough. Yeah. If wow. he would have okay. fired you, we would all be doing something totally different oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. with our yeah. entire lives. Something and I'd probably be homeless. <laughs> okay. but something tells no, me, I'm serious. Something tells me John David would still be wearing a hideous shirt. Oh, so, well, uh, that's up to my sponsors. That's a terrible camouflage <laughs> Okay. Uh, you gonna have to talk to my brother in law about right. this one. He made the he was proud of this shirt. Right. He said, Will you wear it? I said, I'll wear anything. I'm not fashionable. I I'm don't trying care. to figure out what you'd hide from and that maybe would you hide from an Easter egg? <laughs> I think I think this is more about people seeing you than it is oh. about hiding. Oh, so that that's anti camouflage. Hey, hey J D could become an Easter egg. <laughs> okay. How's that? Stuffed with peanut butter. What? <laughs> There you go. Stuff a peanut butter, boys. Hey, and there marshmallow. Right. And Get marshmallow. him on that flank. You'll see. Look. <laughs> hey, fix the taps. He fix the taps and back, boys. Oh, that's one of my favorite things ever. Uh, I'll be okay. over here for the Okay, he'll be over for the duration, boys. Well, I get you on that flank. That sure right. makes that's me right. laugh. It hurts. Golly. The Pillberry. No boy. Let's, so I've noticed no boy. that though about old people. They don't realize when they they think they're playing with mm -hmm. you. My papa used to slap me on the back when he'd hug me, and it just straight hurt. Oh yeah, just right in the flank. Or when they ask you, let me show you how a horse eats an apple, <laughs> and get you on top of that kneecap. <laughs> or when they ask you, how does a turkey peek over a log? Right. I haven't yes. heard that one. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Ho horse bite. Show him. <laughs> show him, sir. <laughs> You he, don't know how he, he done got jumpy, boys. I was born he done jumpy. Got jumpy. No, just stay right there. So I was gonna show you how turkey peeks right. over a log. <laughs> see, look, you see that? You went just like that. You, <laughs> you raised up. You raised up to peek over a log. I didn't know you didn't know that one, Sean. Yeah, look. yeah I've look. never heard that one before. <laughs> you want me to show you? That's right. Hey. Don't touch Stone. He'll whoop you. <laughs> Hey, he's yeah. just looking for a reason to jump on you anyway. Hey, no, Stone <laughs> Stone gave us a full class the other day on self-defense, on which I ended up on the floor very quickly, about four or five times. I got videos of it. It was funny. Yeah. No, no, hey, he's already, I've seen him with Stone out there. I went over, he's cooking something for us, you know, and while we're waiting, you know, the meat's on, it's cooking and smoking and all that, and he said, all right, Sage, come up here. All right, here's the move. Picked on the baby? Uh, she, picked on the baby? No. no. Baby, baby picked on me. Oh. Hey, the, baby, the baby done put him down on the ground. 
<laughs> I'm looking at something. I, I, I looked. I said, Stone, you may not want to do that. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you got to be careful with the little kids because they'll, they'll have they'll have their cousins in a yeah. Get, yeah in they'll a they'll hurt somebody around here. Yeah. Ah, that's fantastic. Yeah. But uh, you know, a little self defense is is a good thing to teach. It never kids. it never hurt right. anybody. No. Unless you're I'm not the self. <laughs> <laughs> if that if self defense hurt somebody, it was on purpose. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, let's take one more break. We'll come back right after this. If you're a business owner, you might be making running your business harder on yourself than necessary. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It is time to upgrade to the net suite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it and ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you more visibility and control over your financials, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need, all in one place, instantaneously. It even has software to tell you about your customer. That way you can target them better in your marketing campaigns, and just make a better spend of all of your money. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 24,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash duck. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash duck, netsuite.com slash duck. So, Phil so, goes to the dentist without so medicine. Tell, no, hey, hey. no, no medicine. No, no medicine. Numbing agents None. whatsoever. None. Can I say something? Phil Robertson's way tougher than Oliver B. Well, no, and no, I no, think no, we hey. all knew that. No. Him well, and he, him his and Paul. Famous, his famous line was, "I can do. I can stand anything for five minutes." Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Ooh. Mm-mm. So tell them, tell them what your uh, your y'all's dad did with the with the pliers that day. Hey, he's done so. <laughs> no, he's done so much for flowers. <laughs> Yo, hey, oh, well, the they, domino they, were, they were playing dominoes, and, and he asked your mom for some pliers. Remember? I don't even remember what he pulled out, but hey, he, you know, I think a t- uh, oh, hey, a wisdom tooth. I think he pulled yeah. his own wisdom tooth yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bothering him. It was aching, so he just said, uh, "You know, he said, uh, you got any pliers?" And mom said, "Yeah, I think something's in there on you know whatever you know." Yeah, he went in there and talking about it. And the next day he hears, he, he come in there with it, just blood all over it. You know what I'm talking about? You know? I don't he, think that's safe. He pulled his own tooth with a pair of pliers. Yeah. Nope. Mm-mm. Oh, no, it's, he, he's done stuff worse than that. You know? I don't know if it gets any worse. Oh, than no, that. it gets worse, trust me. Huh? Okay, and I can't tell this on the podcast. This is family podcast. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Okay. He, you know, we'll edit it out because I well, kind of want to hear this well, story. Well, no, no, because, hey, look. Yeah, I want to know where it'll <laughs> you know, take us. Go he on. fell off of an oil derrick and broke his back. Okay, and they had just, you know, numbed him, shot him up with stuff, and he was about half asleep, you know, and the guys come walking in. He said, uh, what are y'all building? You know, he thought they was carpenters. They said, no, we're the surgery team that's going to work on you. You know, he said they had saws and hammers and stuff. You know, come walking out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Thank God for modern medicine. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, oh. I go to the same dentist as Phil, and, <laughs> and I asked the dentist, I said, is it true that Phil doesn't take any pain killings uh, whatsoever? And he said, that's 100% true. He said, I drilled him out the other day. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you think no, about no. that, okay? Because, no. hey, look. Uh-uh. No. I've had him work on me, and I mean, I'm numb, okay? Yeah. And it got. It still it, hurts. No, no. Yeah, it got hot. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. When he, the know. worst part is hearing it. Yeah. That's the worst thing about a dentist is hearing it. You hear that? When you hear that high-pitched <laughs> drill, <laughs> but when you hear it change gears. Yeah. And you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah. Me yeah. too. That's why I don't go. My teeth are all yeah. jacked up. Mm. So like, Me too. A bunch of mine are fake. And they, uh, you can smell it sometimes when they're burning stuff off. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh, the yeah. worst. Yeah. No. Yo, he why just, are we talking about He just about sits this? there. <laughs> yeah. No. And hey, just takes put, it. Hey, put me out or either numb me totally. And look, if something happens during duck season, he 
he will not go to the doctor or dentist. Oh, I'm very aware. <laughs> I remember probably my second duck season down there. We had big gumbo from some Cajun. No. I ain't going to name her name. Coot. I don't want to embarrass yep. nobody. Coot but, gumbo. And, and we all <laughs> ate it. And not every we, one not of we, us. No, not all we, because I, I ain't no gumbo man. Most of us ate it. <laughs> and, but every one of us that ate it got sick as a dog. Yeah. Something done turned in it. I don't know if it's oysters or the yeah. shrimp. or. But anyway, we all got sick. Well, we all get on the mend. We's out for about 24 hours. But I guess Phil must have hit it again because the next day we went hunting. Phil said, you know, I think I'm finally starting to feel better. And he just, you look at him and he's white as a sheet. And as soon as he gets that out of his mouth, he turns around, throws up out of the duck blind and says, yep, I'm better now. So, I mean, the man just goes hunting with food poisoning or whatever got us. We done got some kind of, in his words, microbe. Microbe. And, uh, <laughs> the microbe got me, boy. The microbe. Yeah, the microbe. And he did. But he looked up. We just running fever, chills, all that mess. He said, yeah, I, I, I think I'm starting to feel better. Blah. Yep, that's it. I'm good now. No, He's not going to miss any duck hunting. It was unbelievable. For nothing. Oh, I didn't get out of bed for a day. I'm trying to think. Time. I'm trying to think what he, day he missed it, and we went up on Cypress Creek, and he he could hear us shooting, bum, and, bum, it, bum, and it like killed him. Well, he did the same thing when when yeah. we when, when we had the veterans hunt. He couldn't go. He sat on the front porch. Kay told me this later. He sat on the front porch, and she said, "Phil, what are you doing?" He said, "I'm listening for gunfire." <laughs> he just wanted no. to know what he was no, missing. That's it. No, no. That's all yeah. it was to it. He had to know. I don't remember what made it, because, like, he was sick as a dog. Well, that was like Al. Al's appendix erupted. You know, blew up inside <laughs> it. Yeah, but Al didn't stay there on his own accord. Well, I know, but he stayed there. Well, you well, hunted through a heart attack. Well, don't be talking right. about nobody doing stupid things. Yeah, Al's appendix blew up. We were on yeah. that bench on the pipeline, yeah, and Jeff was there for some reason. And Je- it was Jeff about 9 was there o'clock. for some yeah. reason. And uh, he said, Dad, I think Al, something's wrong with Al. And Al's just writhing in pain. <laughs> And Phil's like, and Jeff said, Dad, we need to take Al to, to the hospital. And Phil said, what time is it? And, uh, <laughs> and, All that mileage is going to be there. Jeff, about Jeff said, it's 9 o'clock. And Phil said, well, well we, we need to give them to at least 11. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, prime time. No, we ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, we need to give them to out, That appendix had done developed some, uh, it, some kind of shell, protective shell on the outside of it, which the only reason he didn't die. Well, it's and, because uh, of that. Well, it's yeah. because of that. Yeah. And uh, That's from all that lead shot he ate all in the year. Oh. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> hey, you talking about that? Uncle Marvin, Hobbs, okay, he literally went to the hospital dying. They done called the family in, notified all the kin folks and everything. He's on his deathbed. Yeah. They x-ray. They done tried everything, so they x-ray him, and they look, and here's this big black ball that shows up on the x-ray. Yeah, you know, went in and they cut it out of his uh, it wasn't his I don't know it wasn't his appendix spleen it was huh probably his spleen may have huh? been his spleen but yeah. anyway hey one hundred and like a hundred and thirty pellets lead pellets six, lead yeah pellets. sixes fours <laughs> twos he had done eight so much okay he was dying from lead poisoning look after he got over that he looked like. Like he was about 65. He looked like he was 35. After you know, he, he got lived, over the lead pole? Oh, yeah. This and is Uncle Marvin? That, yeah. Marvin Hobbs. He, he had done eight so much lead, like squirrels, ducks, all that. And, hey, they counted like 130 pellets out. Man, that boy. You know, the doctor had it on, had it on a, in a kind of a bucket. Uncle Marv need to slow down when he eats. <laughs> take your time. Find that, find no, that, and when he's cleaning animals. <laughs> no, 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 here, you got to believe. I got to tell it, okay? But anyway, Go ahead. Him, and, him and Uncle Al film, okay? That's a mean one. Yeah. He, they <laughs> went They went together. Saved up in a minute. They He's went the one together. That, that back you up in the hornet's nest. You know, hey, yeah. Wildcat, all, all day. Uh-huh. They, they drilled, hit, drilled, you know. And hey, blue top of the deck out, so they're instant millionaires. These are just country boys, okay? They don't know what to do with it, yeah. But anyway, he's sounds, finally, he's out. finally. That yeah. sounds familiar. Well, no, no. <laughs> yeah. go ahead. But anyway, no. <laughs> Uncle Marvin's on his deathbed for real, okay? And he tells his daughter Sally, "Come in here, darling." You know, 
He said, uh, help me walk me out to the yard. I want to show you something. So she walks him out to the yard, and he said, right here. He said, after I die. He said, wait a while, and then, you know, come out here and dig this up. You know, so <laughs> look, she had forgot about it. It's been two years he's dead. You know, he's gone. She had forgot about it. They had having a family reunion, and she said, oh, good grief, I forgot. And I, all the kids said, what, what do you mean you forgot? You know, all the brothers and sisters. And they said, Dad took me out in the yard and showed me a spot. And he said, after I'm gone, go ahead and dig it up. <clears throat> so, hey, they go out there and dig it up. And it's about 10 mason jars full of money. You know, well, next thing, hey, here comes a backhoe. And they dig. <laughs> dig the whole yard up. Hey, they dig the whole property up. Hey, back there was just, you know, well, they laughed about it. And said, well, that was, only, that was the only spot he had money. Yo, he said, because Max said, because, hey, we dug the whole property up. He said, yo. Boy, that's a good thing Jace didn't roll up there. <laughs> oh, boy. Golly. Jace would have been on his hands. He'd, have been, out, he'd so. have been out there with his spade. So. Oh, oh, no, no. no. Oh, yeah. Tink, tink, tink. Okay, let's yeah. see what's up here. <laughs> <laughs> so Uncle Marv or Uncle FM had the money? No, Uncle, Mar uh, Uncle Marvin. Uncle Marvin. I need to All learn right. more about Marv. Yeah. Marvin. Big Marv. Survive that poison and make money. He he never, eater, oh, I, 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 I got a good money. one for this you. This man never worked a day in his life. He, <laughs> you know, he did. It was trapping. He run a trap line. That's about all he ever done. He's a hustler. Hold on. <laughs> he, I, you, know, that, you know, Irene, I know why she was mean now. Cause, uh, that, Uncle Marv was, Mar Mar was her husband. Yeah. So she had to do all the work. That's why she was mean. Yeah. And was, hey, you you set your feet on her table, she's fixed to cut you with her toes. <laughs> Point blank. <laughs> she's going to reach down there, and she ain't wearing no shoes, and she'll grab you with that big toe in the next one and pinch the blood out of you. <laughs> and <laughs> Hey, no, no. The Hobbs and Ann Hale had a mean streak with them boys. Uh. I got way more questions than answers. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can answer them right after this. What, break. Is that, what does that mean? I cut you hey, they mean. Toes. Huh. Hey. Interesting. We'll be right back for the last second. <laughs> Scoremaster can be the difference between getting whatever deal they offer you on a home, car, credit card, or apartment are getting the best deal and saving you money. How is that possible? Because the average ScoreMaster user adds 61 points to their credit in 20 days or less. But get this, you can add 33 points in just a few days. That's a game changer. We've had listeners email in. The one always stands out because he popped his score up 135 points just from using ScoreMaster. So do you know what that means? That means he just saved himself $100,000 over the life of a home loan, tens of thousands of dollars over the life of a car loan. So even if you have a great credit score, ScoreMaster shows you how your spending affects your score. It even tells you when to pay certain bills to boost your credit score. No one else can do that. ScoreMaster is so valuable, the average person logs in almost five times a month. That's even more than online banking. Remember when Steve Jobs said simple is the hardest things to do? Well, They've done it at ScoreMaster. ScoreMaster is simple and easy to use. So take one minute to enroll, see your points, get your points, and get $1 million in fraud insurance to protect your score. Go to scoremaster.com slash duck. That's scoremaster.com slash duck. I don't know how many times that film backed us kids in, 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 in Washington. Thank you, sir. You know, and hey, I ain't talking about, this was in the day when we was little, and hey, these suckers were like this, and hey, it ain't another one. You couldn't fit another purple tail on it. But I know a place that still gets like that during the summer. Can I take you down there and we do it for old times' sake? <laughs> no. Can no. I just back you into I ain't missing it? old times. Okay? Uh, I ain't got a YouTube You said video. you want to go back to your childhood. No, no, because that's that. You remind me of that place we went up there and filmed, and you chased me with that dead rattlesnake. <laughs> uh oh. Look, and uh. I only did that because I knew you didn't have a gun. Oh, no, 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 because, <laughs> hey, if I'd had one, I'd have shot you. I know. But anyway, what I liked about that, when we was out there in the boat and that thing, we look up in a dead tree out there in the middle of that thing, and look, honey was just running out of this stupid tree down to the to the water. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. that. So I Full got, of bees. I got a question. Oh, no, hey. Full of bees. I got a question. You probably would know the answer, Martin. Uh-oh. Since you run, run with these uh, professional bass fishermen, if – if a professional bass fisherman wore that shirt he's wearing right now, 
I would automatically assume he's getting paid a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Go to honeyholeshop.com to get yours. <laughs> yeah, I, I was sitting there thinking, is him wearing that, Johnny D wearing that shirt, is that helping or hurting Oh, I business. see why he's doing this. is advertisement, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always yeah. wear the, the brand, man. Right. Family. He's wearing the brand, yeah. boys. The it's family fam- brand. Family that's, thing. Fa- that's family business. Yeah. That's the honey hole. Let that's me assure right. you something. Nepotism is still very much real over at the honey What's hole. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about, Jack? That no. is a terrible <laughs> shirt. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Now, I've always wondered. I've heard people call, you know, Golfers, athletes, uh oh, professional fishermen, athletes. Mm. What's the definition of an athlete? Uh oh, plays. We went through this a little bit last week. So, would you call? So, I said a bull rider is not an athlete. No, I would beg differ on a bull rider. No, hey, a bull rider is a crazy man. (laughs) Okay, ain't no athlete involved in that. What about a race car driver? Yeah, NASCAR. NASCAR driver. That ain't no sport either. I okay. can't. Now do he it. could be an an endurance athlete. Who? I would say back in the day you probably had that argument. Today's NASCAR drivers are I mean they're they're comfortable. They're physical. They look specimen. to be in good shape. Like, yeah, and I mean, even they're... even golfers. I remember when I was growing up, there were a lot of fat golfers. Oh, yeah. Nowadays, golfers now are like so other sport washouts. I mean, that's kind of like, <laughs> oh boy. Well, I mean, there's oh, yeah. several of them. So they can't drag... cut it. They can't cut it in any other sport. Well, they can't get to that level okay, in so the that other level. sport. Yeah, I mean, like well, Dustin, now, hey. Dustin Johnson can flat-footed dunk a basketball. I mean, mm-hmm. and he can also hit a golf ball three sixty. So I, I would uh-huh. say Dustin Johnson is an athlete. Well, hey, I'm yep. amazed. But okay. all golfers are athletic because it takes hand-eye coordination yeah. to do it. But that so, doesn't mean that they're all an athlete. So like, hand-eye coordination is part of being an athlete. Well, yeah. Hey, right, J.D., what is, what is the definition of athlete? By, One moment, by, please. By Webster. By Mr. By Webster. Webster. Yeah. Okay, but here's what I will say for those that play all this, do all this stuff, especially golf. Mm-hmm. I, I am amazed at what they can do with a, a iron or a wood. Oh, 100%. <laughs> okay. Uh, to a little white ball. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous what they can do with it. So, okay. unpopular want, opinion. Baseball was better with steroids. Do you agree with that? Agreed. Uh, no. It was, and I wish I could prove this because me and Jason Robertson has had this uh, stupid argument forever. I would give Jason Robertson... He could use all the drugs he wants on his team, okay? I mean, all of them. Team of what? Baseball. Baseball Baseball. team. I will take ten people or nine people that love to play the game, and and I will whoop whoop (laughs) his drug-induced team every time we play. What What if his drug-induced team is like Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa? Look, drugs didn't make Mark and McGuire and Sammy Sosa knock him home runs. Sure they had the to. No, 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 no. Okay, they I, had I got to, a Wheaties box with Mark McGuire's hey, face. They on. had to have the natural ability to put that bat on that ball. Yeah. That's an okay. argument for steroids. No, I ain't arguing for steroids. Steroids make you, hey, steroids make you feel like you're ten foot tall, but hey, you're still five eleven or whatever you are. You're still the itty bitty man, okay? Mark McGuire was not itty bitty, but your hands move way faster. Right. Yeah. Now here's and the you're deal. Way hey, yeah. <laughs> no, no, and I, the ball flies hey, way hey, far. No, no, I put it this way, okay? When they could luck out and put the bat on the ball, a guy that worked out with weights would hit it further than someone like me. You don't say. <laughs> okay, because it was just, hey, that's just uh, physics, okay? But when you're saying, okay, drugs makes me better, you talking about a drug dealer's, uh, uh, you talking about a promotional thing. <laughs> okay, this is a promotional guy that finally just hit the home run himself. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll shoot them full of drugs and call it, oh, this ain't drugs. This is a performance enhancing 
shot I'm Drug. giving you. <laughs> you know, Leave that guy a yeah. PED. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a performance. This is going to make your performance way better. Uh, we, we could do a whole episode on oh, this. Yeah. So um, hey, hey, you're, never, you're never going to convince me because uh, the only way to argue, stop this argument, give me nine look, men that love to play the game. So, okay. So, so, so now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it, end it with this. Uh-oh. Okay. All right, he's got the final uh, say so, boys. The coup de gras. The so, coup de gras. It is a fact that the steroids will make you bigger, faster, and stronger. Okay, we know that, right? Yep. So yep. I will agree with all that. <laughs> <laughs> so if okay. if you take somebody like Johnny D, for instance, okay, you give him a baseball bat and put a ball on a tee, he hits it maybe 150 feet. Okay, that was pretty. Good. You give him steroids and let him work out for a year, then he's going to come to the tee and hit it 250 feet. Because he took steroids, not because he's any good, because he's not good. I was decent at baseball. The only Curve thing I, 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 I agree with the theory behind it, like you're saying, because it, you know, but you still got to bring in the talent, okay? And and in my humble opinion, okay, it says I'll I'll go to music. There is God giving talent, okay? This person gets it. This clown over here don't get it. And then there's okay. auto tune. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, look, and you can say, okay, this person the, has it. The okay. steroids of music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, no, no. And then you say, okay, but well, what I'm gonna do is, and and this is a drug dealer. Himself. Okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna just pump you full of this enhancement drug I just come up with, and you're gonna be able to do all the wonderful things you that guy can. Ain't gonna happen. So you're. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the well, so who was better, Ken Griffey or Barry Bonds? Uh, who's Ken Griffey? <laughs> <laughs> the, you can't have this. Barry We're out. Uh, Barry Bonds, I know. Okay. The Barry Bonds steroids. Ken here's, Griffey. Here's was. why this theory don't hold water. What y'all saying? Do you know how many people's in the home run club? And baseball's been playing for how many Which, years? What's the home run club? The home run club is all these people that have knocked home runs, and they're in the club. <laughs> 500, 500 plus. 500, 500 plus. 500 plus. 500 yeah. Okay. I know how many I was people about are to in say, the club. Try. Say how, long is, how long has baseball been playing? A lot of Longer years. Longer than you. There's you, know 20, how many, you know how many people's in this home run club? 27. 500. Yeah, 27. So, hey, y'all take that theory about the drug and – Flush it down your um, how good many, day. How many of them are from <laughs> the for, from the steroid? One, era? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So without drugs, there's only nineteen. I, I rest my case. It ain't but eight with drugs. Huh? But it that's ain't because with drugs. But that's we're talking because about I rest my case. You were driving the Falcon down the hey, river when somebody. I these rest people my were case. <laughs> 19 that liked to play beat the eight that was drug enhancement. Yeah. That's just but the those, eight that those, aren't. Eight aren't in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to assume that's because of but drugs. But those, yeah. those eight. Uh, we'll say seven. Those eight left 500 in the dust and got to six and 700. <laughs> yeah. This is also true. <laughs> 762 uh, by Barry. Hey, should Pete Rose be in the Hall of Fame? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, be in there. Barry Bonds? Uh, yeah. Hey, you stare They play. Yeah. Hey. But hey, look here. Rules of the know, time. No, no. Hey, Here's the hey, thing. No, no. How many did he knock before they even come up with this performance deal? A bunch. But you know what? A bunch. That's but you you know what Barry Bonds okay. didn't have? Barry Bonds didn't have Omega XL. Thank you. <laughs> All right, there you go, baby. You didn't have 35 years of research and development. <laughs> Right. Working for you. Uh, That's look, working for you. We're up against the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry we did not get into any of the emails at hello, hello at, at callroom.com. Call. We will do it next time. But we'll do it next That's time. Right. We appreciate y'all joining in. Look, I am interested. If you made it this far with us, I want to know. Drop a comment. Did steroids make baseball better? I got to know. Ken Griffey. Was We're my out. Favorite. Right. See y'all next week on the <laughs> Hold on. Call. We got huh? a Bible verse, man. Oh, we do. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you have Sorry. one? No. 
All right. waiting on you. My dad emails me every day with a Bible verse, so we're going with that one today. Whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalms 91, 2. No, 91, 1 and 2. And my dad said, staying close enough to God to rest in his shadow makes for a life of satisfaction and trust. So, Big Dave, thanks for the encouragement, That's my it. friend. Because, hey, the Almighty has a big, big, he's like Big John. He has a big, big shadow. That's it. Rest in it. I like, I like, I like, I like old Big Dave. <laughs> That's not more.